A primary school in a village in West Midnapur district. These little school children have seen conflict with elephants in their villages almost every night. And the schools teach kids the importance of coexistence. In the forested parts of Bengal's West Midnapur district, as man is at a face-off with one of the world's largest mammal, the elephant, the kids get their learnings in school. Their innocence, coupled with a fear of survival, only helps lay a better foundation in the years to come. The elephant has been worshipped in the Indian mythology in various forms since ages, and there is deep-rooted reverence for the elephants. In the Gada Piazal range, you can see three elephant statues in memory of three elephants which died in successive years. Beat officer Sra Boni Day is heading to a village. The elephants have raided the fields, houses, and the granaries. She has to meet the villagers, assess the damage, and file compensation requests. The villagers are angry and upset and want help and compensation from the forest department. From the fields, she heads to the villages to inspect houses which have been damaged by raiding elephants. Elephant-proof trenches have been created lining the forest to prevent elephants from leaving the forest. But their drive for food makes some of them cross this against all odds. The elephants reach the open fields. Bengal's increasing forest cover is a result of the very organized joint forest management program by the West Bengal Forest Departments, called the JFMC, or the Joint Forest Management Committee. That entails the participation of local communities and forest guards in forest upkeep. They meet every month to address village problems, plan habitat and resolve conflict, results in better relations and helps villagers understand and coexist with animals. And this development, completely run by the forest department, without the presence of a declared protected popular sanctuary. Schools and regular JFMCs are not the only way. The villagers need to be continuously told the coexistence messages in interesting ways. The chow dance form of storytelling has been popular in this area for centuries. This dance troupe does a special performance on conflict with elephants. The entire village is out to see the performance. The message is loud and clear. Humans have destroyed the corridors and invaded the forests. Where would the elephants go? It's time for the goddess of the forest Bondevi to come down and tell the humans to coexist and live peacefully with the elephants. 
This forms an important part of the world that the Forest Department believes in, that will lay the foundation for coexistence. In the Midnapur range, the elephants have been spotted coming out of the forest. More than 70 elephants have invaded. Word has spread, and villagers are moving in towards the elephants. The forest guards have reached and are stopping the villagers from going towards them. The villagers are getting restless and pelting stones to stop them enter the fields and villages. Beat officer Shital is heading to the area. The villagers from nearby villages have all started gathering and it will aggravate the situation and agitate the elephants. He has to stop the villagers from getting closer. In this entire beat, he is the only line of safety between the villagers and elephants. The drone is deployed to check the location and count of the elephants and we notice that the humans have surrounded the elephants from all sides. They are all near the elephants which are out in the open. But there are a lot more elephants in the scrub moving towards them. It's a dangerous situation. So, our director would call me that the hatita can be just to show up town take a durag bo. We have to take a need this to go to bed. Range forest officer Mednipur Range Juin says, people cross all limits throwing stones, shouting, going close, and it's extremely difficult for us to contain the large unruly crowd. No one wants to listen. There is intense chaos, and they have a mammoth task of stopping people from going closer to the elephants every day. Most of them are more interested in display of their bravery and selfies with the herds in the background. There is total chaos. Thousands of villagers in different groups have assembled and are trying their own tactics, not listening to anybody. Elephants have small calves, some as old as 10 days, and they are extremely protective and get angry and agitated with the chaos and crowds. The elephants still remain calm. The territorial dance drama starts every afternoon as the elephants start coming out of the thicket and head to the water holes. Every gesture by humans elicits a reaction from the elephants. The war for land happens each day. It's a war between two worlds, both deprived. First the elephants ignore, and ignore more as the villagers get close. But each person getting close is invading their space it's time to warn them. The gentle giants start their warning, drive them off the land they have occupied. The elephants charge and the villagers flee. But they go back immediately, making the situation more difficult and dangerous. It starts getting darker. The villagers are adamant. They push their limits, get chased with fear again and again. One more warning. And then another one. And people start flashing torches High beam torches annoy them, and they charge at the people flashing these lights from a close distance. This attack makes the entire crowd run for safety and into a frenzy. The Aravat steps in many times, as the line of control, protecting villagers from angry elephants, which somehow avoid the Aravat momentarily but it's only for some time. The elephants do not vacate the fields. 
The Aravat is an important weapon in the Forest Department arsenal. A four-wheel drive hooder truck retrofitted with a 100 kilowatt and 150 kilowatt searchlight on both sides. A generator, red and blue flashlights, radio transmission, a public address system, along with a tranquilizer set. Despite the hooder and blinding lights, many times the elephants refuse to move. Rather, trumpet in retaliation, coming as close as 10 meters to the Aravad. The hula party get into action. The hula party's main instrument is called hula, a long wooden stick with a gunny bag tied to one end, which is set alight. Fire scares the elephants. The gunny rag is doused in burnt mobile motor oil, as it burns the longest of all substrates, and that is highly critical to the hula operation. Elephants fear nothing. Light only distracts them, but they do not fear it. Fire for centuries has kept animals away from human settlements. They are prepared for all dangers and mentally prepared to drive the elephants out without harm to the elephants. Through the night, chaos rules. The elephant herds are moving towards the villages and all the villagers are out of their houses. These unruly villagers and crowd, which gathers and do their own thing, are the biggest threat to the driving out operation. The villagers get restless, come out onto the streets, and there would be hundreds and sometimes thousands of people standing, shouting, pelting stones, flashing torches exactly in the way of the exit route for the elephants, jeopardizing the eight to ten hours of relentless work by the forest guards and the hula party. One small herd has come right into the village, and this triggers panic and chaos. There is complete frenzy. Fire sticks are waved, and people form a barrier holding these sticks and shout. They quickly spread out to change the direction of the moving herd. As day breaks, the elephants retreat into the forest. But the crops are gone, everything devastated. The elephants have left a trail of destruction, and their footprints remind the villagers of the losses. Paddy fields, potatoes, fishes in their water, everything has been destroyed. The fields display a destructive pattern, which only warns them of the difficult lives ahead with their fields gone. And this is their hard work for the last few months, and their only source of livelihood for the next few months. <laughs> प्रवेश कर घर बाड़ी भेगे दीचे एवं मानुष्टे एक खूब आतंक मध्य दिए समय प्रवाहित हो हाथी रोज आता है लेकिन उसे किसी को डर नहीं आता है आँख से उसको बहुत डर आता है इसलिए हम आँख लगा के उसे डराता है इसे हम लोग सोया नहीं शाम हो जाता तो हाथी निकल आता ऐसे खेती बाड़ी हम लोगों का नष्ट कर दे रहा है देखिए आप सामने गाचपला महिला गत बचर छे पैंसठ हजार टाच ए बचर छे पंचाश हजार टाच क्या माँ पाई से शो एक दल पुरोटाई लस खेल हाथी को क्षति हमें कर हाथी खेल चेषा कर छेका दे हाथी के आगुन हो पाली जाए नहीं जा हाथी हाथी ताड़ाना जा 
Joydeb Kundu and his wildlife conservation organization, SHARE, has been working with the forest department over the last decade. He has been working with the villagers in this range to reduce this conflict. He believes the long-term solution is in working together and educating more and more people in the only alternative so, that exists. Over the past few years, the West Bengal Wildlife Wing of the Forest Department and we have collaborated and we are trying to find out a way through which we can communicate to the local people how to stay away from elephants. And as, a, as part of that campaign, which in Bangla we are saying Bajbo Mora Bajbe Ora, that means we will also survive and we will also let the elephant survive. So that is again the, the, what we are talking about the coexistence. And we are trying to build this campaign up since the last few years from the school level. Because we have started with school children, we have been going to schools, to colleges, to the nookers, to all the areas. And we have been talking to local people, we have been talking, we, are, we have been going to areas where the fair, local fairs happen, the, the, the weekly uh, fairs that take place. And we are communicating to people through audio visuals, through voice aids, how to stay away from elephants and how to stay away from conflict. So it is basically, we are trying to keep the elephants and the humans uh, uh, apart from each other. So that is the, uh, the campaign we are trying to do. Rabindra Nath Saha, Divisional Forest Officer, West Midnapur Range, has one of the highest cases of human-elephant conflict in country. He is always on the move in a dangerous and hostile environment, where there is always a fight for survival, be it humans or elephants. This always keeps the team motivated and in action, and his dedicated field team is always ready to catch hold of trespassers. He gets his depth of understanding of the issues by working with the teams and villagers. He is also popularly called Robin Saha, after Robin Hood, for his love for supporting the villagers. The villagers' trust and relationship with the forest department increases manifold with Robin Saha, visiting them regularly and helping them get solutions. If you go through the statistics, last year we have seen throughout the year we are having the elephants in our divisions. Uh, suppose if you see the Mednapur, till today we are having 60, nearly 60 elephants. But just 15, 20 days back, we had nearly 120 to 130 elephants. Even, and throughout the year, if you see our bulk assessment system, all the management system we are having for sharing the information with the lower level staff and villagers, there you will be seeing these, these divisions is worsely affected. And unlike other previous years, from last year onwards, we are facing continuously throughout the year the elephant depredation problem. And elephant prefer to stay particularly in this area because of these beautiful habitats we are having here. Most of the lion's share of our time we are spending for the benefit of the people and interacting with the people to give importance to their sentiments, to their feeling. The shortage of stuff, you know. Uh, according to the statistics in division, we are supposed to get 324 number of stuffs in my divisions. But at present, we are having only 156 or 55 like that stuff. Only 50% are capable of coming to the field. Rest of them are not physically fit. So this is the biggest hindrance and challenges we are facing for the man elephant conflict management in this area. Despite having this sort of problem, still we are managing this problem most effective way due to effective public relations system we are having in the form of GFMCs. This is one of the prime location where elephant used to stay most of the time in under the Chandra range. So this is called Subnakali area. So we have developed uh, using the natural slope of the soil, uh, forest area. And we, our objective is that, that most of the part of the year, if water is available inside the forest, we will be able to confine the elephant in the single area, you know. So what we are planning, we are planning to uh, develop some, plant some fruit trees, like uh, Mangifera silvitica is a uh, wild mango we call. And then Delenia indica like Chalta, we used to call in the local language. And then Atrocarpus. So uh, some fruit species will be available throughout the year. So that uh, elephant along with the waters, they can also get the fruits. So the objective of habitat management will also be suffice here. After seeing the area, you can easily understand 
जे फ्रॉम सी रिफ्यूज शेल्टर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू फ्रॉम हैबिटेट डेवलपमेंट पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू फ्रॉम वाटर अवेलेबिलिटी एवरीथिंग इज वेरी कॉन्जीनियल फॉर द वाइल्ड लाइफ यू नो इफ यू सी द कम्पोजिशन ऑफ द एलिफेंट हर्ड हियर यू विल बी सींग की द नंबर ऑफ काफ्स हैज इंक्रीज यू नो एंड वाई बिकॉज बिकॉज दे आर गेटिंग कॉन्जीनियल इन्वायरमेंट हेयर फॉर ब्रीडिंग ऑल्सो सो दैट्स वाई वी आर ट्राइंग टू डेवलप दिस सुखनाखली एरिया फ्रॉम हैबिटेट मैनेजमेंट पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू सो दैट इट विल सब बुद्ध फॉर द ह्यूमन एज वेल एज फॉर द एनिमल ऑल्सो एज वी ऑल नो दैट को एग्जिस्टेंस इज द की वर्ड फॉर एनी काइंड ऑफ मैनेजमेंट एंड कंजर्वेशन सिस्टम एलिफेंट्स आर वेरी डिफिकल्ट एनिमल्स टू मैनेज विदाउट एनी एडिक्वेट मैन पावर और रिसोर्सेज इन स्पाइट ऑफ दैट द फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट आउट हियर इज ट्राइंग देयर बेस्ट विद द हेल्प ऑफ विलेजर्स to manage the herds of elephants who always tend to scatter out so when a herd of say 25 30 elephants come they get they split into many groups and it becomes even more difficult for uh, for the forest department and the villagers to manage them so let me ask a question if somebody or an elephant comes and attacks your house won't you stop it or won't you try to avoid it or will you leave it that it's an elephant so it can, it can come and break down your house so for ages elephants have been surviving or existing with human in this area and over the years they have become habituated to stuff like lights powerful lights or other measures which used to drive them away they have adopted those things and fire is one element that at least till date scares them away so this evening we are at pajashol village which is a high highly conflict area where almost every evening with elephants all around this area they have conflicts with the villagers and as you can see the range officer is here with his with her beat officers and other field staff and they are trying to interact with the villagers to try and find out a strategy which they can use to keep the elephants away and cause at least minimum damage to this village The only thing about this landscape is humans and elephants need to coexist. Period. There is no two thing about it. We have to do this and we have to make people live with elephants and also elephants survive with people out here. The villagers want to coexist. But when their existence is challenged, they would no longer tolerate it and that's my greatest fear. As elephant herds are chased from village to village because they raid fields, crops, houses and granaries for food, the situation only gets serious. The more problems the villagers face, the more dangerous it will prove for the elephants. Over the years, the conflict has only become worse. With meager resources at all ends, people barely live off cultivation. The villagers fight a lost battle every day. and the elephants win food only for that night at the cost of becoming refugees every day every hour and every inch of land is a fight for survival the elephants will continue to stay as long as forests are destroyed and the fields provide for them it is important for all the villagers the forest department to work together and create an environment for coexistence conflict will only add more conflict if the elephants have to be protected then the conflict needs immediate mitigation the protectors that is the forest department also need their powers there is immense need for a cohesive support system for the villagers and the forest department and there also a need for much stronger resources support to the forest department such as drones night vision equipments more personnel more capacity building trainings for both the personal and the elephant driving teams positive political will is the only facilitator to this the fragmentation has to stop and development consolidation needs to happen at the villages understanding the criticality of the situation by all is needed to treat it at a far serious level so that it can give the required fill up to the mitigation process We all need to understand that every person here is actually living with elephants. 
With non-contiguous forest tracts interspersed with human habitat, it is a conflict between the deprived, one deprived of its habitat and corridors, and the other deprived of development and resources. No one wants to give up what they get, and that's why the solution can only be collective and not conflicting. And that will help these gentle giants have a free passage in the corridors they once roamed freely.